Ah, actually, I did it. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's it. Hey, what's up, guys? It's me uh, coming to you again from um, from my room as as last time. Um, I've been uh, I've been doing a few uh, more reviews since the last time the Doctor Who unboxing video, but um, I wasn't really satisfied with any of them, so uh, I've just kept on going and keep trying, and hopefully this one will make the cut. Uh, what I thought I would do um, <laughs> is um, basically whenever I buy a new DVD, which is kind of usually pretty often, I I'll just start doing reviews of them, like the content, the movie itself at some time. Sometimes it'll be spoilers and I'll say it. If not, it, it will all depend on the movie. If it's something brand new, I won't be as spoilery if it's something that's like 30 years old. So, stuff like that. Um, so I got a new batch. I uh, got two pretty brand new sets and uh, a couple of that's a little bit older, but I'll still consider them new additions to my collection, which has grown to pretty much, I have no idea how many DVDs I own actually. Uh, the first one of these, um, in the spirit of uh, October and the uh, season of Halloween, uh, I for the first time started watching the Hammer movies. And again, don't shoot me. I should have done this a long time ago. Um, the If you don't know, the Hammer movies were like um, British uh, produced movies from, uh, I think they started in the 1950s with basically horror remakes or their own versions of uh, horror movies that Universal was was putting out in America in the 1930s and 40s. So they made like Dracula, Frankenstein movies, uh, Mummy, uh, The Wolfman, I'm not sure was part of the whole Hammer deal, but at least those three was pretty big part of it. With uh, Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee as the main guys. So they had many, 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 many others, but I'm not familiar enough to go through all those names. But Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing, people know. And Peter Cushing uh, started with um, doing the cur I think it was The Curse of Frankenstein, which I saw just a, f a week ago. Which is a damn fine movie. And. Um, and uh, Christopher Lee plays the monster. And the year after, or two, they both got together again, with, again, Cushing as the hero and Chris Lee as the monster, and they made the Dracula movies, or at least the horror of Dracula. Uh, these movies are fan freaking tastic. Um, I've actually not gotten to this this one yet. Dracula's 1972 AD. Sorry for the whole mirror thing. I may try to flip this, but um, if I don't, sorry. Um, but I've seen the three three other ones, and they're so goddamn entertaining. I'm really regretting not seeing these earlier. Um. They're all in color. The first from 1958, and the next ones are from uh, bam, 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 bam. Uh, what the fuck? I know it says there. Okay, Horror of Dracula, 1957, 1969, uh, 1970, and 1972. Yeah. So there's a pretty big gap between the first and the second, but you really don't feel it like these movies. A lot of people are scared of older movies because they feel, think they're boring and whatever. And even though these are in color, I tried switching off the color at one point just to see. And it really is shot and feels like an old school black and white movie. But in color, with blood, with gore, and with f partial nudity. Like, these are pretty f close to a 1980s slasher movie. I, I was really impressed. I really like Chris Lee's Dracula. He, I'm not a huge Dracula fan at all. 
if I like any of them, it has to be Bella Lugosi. But like, I've barely seen the original Dracula, maybe one and a half times. I'm really not that into. I'm more into the legacy of Dracula than Dracula himself. And these movies, even they don't really follow the book or stuff like that that much. Though they take a lot of parts from it, like every single one of them. But they're so fucking entertaining, and Christopher Lee as Dracula is a bad-ass motherfucker. He's just... He's just awesome. So you get uh, this particular DVD set I bought at uh, Play.com. Uh, it's a Region 1 DVD, which I actually got tricked by, because uh, I remember seeing this box set in Norway, in the stores. Uh, I think it was packaged differently, but I remember this set. So I really thought this was a Region 2, and um, my PlayStation can play Region 1, so that's not a problem. Um, but I got this new Blu-ray player that I was trying to play them on, and I saw The Horror of Dracula on the internet before uh, before buying it, so I didn't see it at first. I jumped straight to this one. Um, Dracula Has Risen from the Grave, which is a fucking badass title. So, it's this typical... Uh, two-sided discs it's pretty uh, pretty cheap affair but the thing is when you play it the right side up which would be uh, the horror of Dracula then the region coding tells me that I can't pl uh, watch it on my blu-ray player but if I flip it around and watch um, Dracula has risen from the grave it plays just fine so I don't know if it's the region coding that's not on this side. Maybe they didn't region code both sides. I'm not sure. But one half is and one isn't. And it's the same on the other discs. On disc number two, it's the same thing. The upside, if you flip it on the wrong, wrong side, it would be if it was a normal DVD. Then you can watch the movie on any player. This side... You would need, um, sorry, not meaning to flip the bird there. Uh, this side, you would need to need a region free player. So, if you're in uh, Europe like I am, I would try to seek out the Region 2 uh, version of these. These are British movies, they are made for European viewings, and um, I'm pretty sure you can find the box because I remember seeing it in stores like 10 years ago ish. Yeah, at least the horror of Dracula I remember was a big fucking DVD back in the day. So except for that, um, you got subtitles on every movie: um, English, French, and Espanol. Uh, you got French dub if you want that. Um, it's a widescreen release. Um, a theatrical trailer on all of them. Sound I can't really see any specs on. But it's, it's got the Dolby Digital mark on it, so it's probably been remastered in some way or another. So, um, yeah. Uh, the four film favorites. Draculas. By Warner Brothers. If you're, in, if you're in the States, this is a really cheap pickup. It's like... Um, I don't even remember how much I paid for it. It was like... Eight or six seven euros it was like it, it was nothing for four movies at least so um yeah if you are already are into dracula and haven't really got into buying the movies or um if you um if you just are curious about these then i would uh, i would seriously recommend to get them they're really fun they're really cheesy they're perfect for halloween so, um, yeah, Dracula, go get it. Next on my list was, of course, the sixth series of Doctor Who. And again, I was going to do a unboxing video, like straight up, but um, uh, just I couldn't get to film it, so uh, I, I've already started watching a few episodes. I can't stop myself. I love this show. I really do. This season, I'm kind of mixed about, as it got 
I think it's got some really good, fun episodes, but, um, again, I'm not the great, great reviewer right here, go check out Mr. Tardis reviews, and he'll tell you why this, this season's got some issues, and I, I don't agree with all of them, but I do agree with something, some things, and at least the ones pointing towards, um, the season finale, but, uh, yeah, it's a great looking set. I got this like two days ago. You got Matt Smith, Arthur Darville, Car Karen Gillan, and uh, Alex Alex Kingston. Yeah. You got them all right here. With the TARDIS. Matt Smith looking badass as always. Really looking forward to the 50th and really not looking forward to the Christmas special. Like, I want to see the new Doctor, of course, but it's this will be my first live regeneration of a Doctor. And, um, yeah. Like I say, I really like Matt Smith. Um, I think he's really fucking awesome in the role. So it's going to be sad to see him go. But, um, like Tennant said, maybe you don't want to do this until it gets boring, so I can get it. The box again, like, pretty uh, it doesn't have the 3d effect from uh, season 5 but that doesn't really matter to me uh, there is a really cool collector's edition of this for me it was just um, I just want to get the episodes basically in-house so I can watch them whatever I want uh, and I'm not rich at any means uh, but there is a really cool collector edition box of this to, and also of season 5 season 5 you can get this um, steel box with, uh, I think it's just the crack from Amy's bedroom wall. It's a silver box with just the crack in it. It looks really cool. And the collector's edition of this that I've seen has, uh, like, a big face of the si uh, one of the silence. Uh, and it looks really good. So if you're a fan, a big fan, and you want the collector's edition, of course, go for the collector's edition. It doesn't matter... You're a fan, that's why you want the collector's edition you want. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can do a quick unboxing in it anyways. We got the front. Got the side. With the cool logo. Got the back. Lots of episodes. Lots of monsters. Lots of extra material. And the bonus uh, material include... Uh, five times a night and the doctor additional scenes which is basically like doctor at night mini things where you see what he does when um, when uh, Amy and Rory are fast asleep uh, two times comic relief sketches I'm not quite sure if I've gotten to these yet um, so I'm not quite sure what they are uh, commentaries uh, I haven't checked out because they're not really good, really emphasized in the um, on the Blu-ray menus. But I did toggle down on one episode as it started and found a commentary track. So it might be on every episode or it's on some episodes, but at least there are commentaries. There are four monster files. I've seen two of them. Uh, there are five prequels to episodes, which is like a minute, minute and a half, two minutes. Uh, start to the episode kind of fills you in a little bit on something that the TV audience didn't see um, trailers uh, the Doctor Who Confidential cutdowns and something called Doctor Who Confidential A Night's Tale which I have no idea what is yet but I will be getting to that pretty soon and I'm guessing if you watch this either you don't know or you really know it doesn't really matter you want it or you don't it's Doctor Effing Who which, again, I've seen a lot of shows in my life, and this is fast, fast becoming one of my huge, huge favorites. I am going to go back and watch Classic Who at some point, but I really want to... Um, I don't want to start filling my head up with more Who before I've really gotten this story down, like the whole from Russell T. Davis till now, because... I'm still confused about a whole lot of stuff in these. Uh, get a lot of things mixed up and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I love this show. I love being getting mixed up by a show. <laughs> uh, 
Um, except for that, same subtitle specs as always. You drop the sleeve, get another picture, Doctor and the Spaceman, and of course, Amy and Rory. Maybe get rid of some of these windows so we don't get the glare. And again, I'm trying to get a new and better camera. Um, but right now, I just have to use the MacBook. So you'll have to excuse that that will bring. If, the, if there was a pause now, I'll edit that in some way, sorry. Um, trying to close things and things just get worse. Yeah. Um, you open it up. And once again, you get this nice booklet covering the first disc. Which, in principle, I like getting the nice booklet. But I wish it wouldn't cover the first disc. It just, uh, just gets kind of... Um... Like last year's uh, or previous years, it's a full guide of what's on e each individual disc without an episode description in this one. Um, a cool little painting of sorts. And of course, the staring woman. But, um,. Then we get to the discs itself, we got this year's Christmas special, A Christmas Carol, which is probably one of my favorite uh, Christmas specials, really gets the feeling of Christmas and I, yeah, I liked it and it got like the shark. Sharks in fog, how can people hate on sharks in fog, that's fucking awesome, that's like dinosaurs on a spaceship, it's just, it just, that's just right. Um, we got the silence here, the big baddie for this season. Less you know about him, the better, and if you know, then you know, so moving on. We got the flesh, which ain't actually a bad guy of sorts, but yeah. And of course, this disc is in my Blu-ray player right now, and I, oh, I should have checked what it was, sorry. Uh, and... Cyberman, Cyberman, and Matt Smith, the Doctor. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, good solid box. No, um, it's actually a silence on the sleever that I didn't notice until now. <laughs> kind of the point of the whole thing, ain't it? Um. But yeah, um, good solid box, good uh, nothing, no loose parts this time, like on the specials. Um, and yeah, season 7 I've also ordered, so that's probably going to be in the mail, uh, it's released 28, so uh, by next week, I'm hoping. Um... Season overall, like I said, I've just started watching it again, and I'm halfway through. Uh, I just saw the mid-season finale yesterday, and the first mid-season is... I'm not the who expert that a lot of other people are, so just from a first impression kind of view, I like most of these episodes. I like The Christmas Carol, I like The Impossible Astronaut and Day of the Moon. Curse of the Black Spot is... It's better than I actually expect as soon as I see the Pirates thing. I kind of like it. Doctor's Wife is awesome. I really like that one. Rebel Flesh and Almost People has a really good point to it. Uh, or at least a good idea. I don't know if the point is made, but at least the idea is good. And A Good Man Goes to War. Do I have to repeat the question? Like, or would you like me to repeat the question? Like, that's... I love I really love that one. So yeah. Season 6 of Doctor Who if you yeah, of course you're going to get it. I don't really know why I'm saying anything else. So um yeah, go get it. See what else we got. Um this I got a few well, months ago I had it this summer, but uh I feel I should actually 
I bought something else too. So I actually bought these at the same time just to show you how I how I roll. The Psycho Collection with Psycho on Blu-ray. Now, actually, this is the third time basically I buy Psycho one with these two included. Uh, I bought one DVD which a friend borrowed that I've never gotten back. Probably my own fault, but um, uh, this DVD is or this Blu-ray is more or less the same as the DVD. It has. Uh, I don't think it has any new. Uh, any new documentaries, but um, but at least it had the same as the 50th anniversary that I, that I own on DVD. Um, if you're gonna own Psycho today, now uh, yeah, I'm kind of gonna go back on this a little bit because this on Blu-ray looks fan freaking tastic. The picture is clean and sparkly. It doesn't look overdone. Um, the shadows are right. The, it, it all looks beautiful. But but of course, if you're like me and kind of into the old school, I would actually prefer a VHS tape or like this the DVD. And I haven't checked this because I've been watching this version. But this could actually be the DVD that I borrowed out of Psycho. I've checked out these three, but I haven't checked out this. So this could actually be the one I borrowed out. Um, my love for Psycho is great. I've watched Psycho since I was a kid. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I saw Psycho 1 or 2 first. I think I saw Psycho 1 first. I can't really remember when I saw that the first time. But I remember being in high school, home from a late from a party, really drunk on the couch, flipping through the channels, and boom, Psycho 2 comes on. Psycho 2? They made a sequel to this? Of course I knew about Psycho. I was I was kind of the Scream generation. So I saw a lot of movies through I've heard about them in Scream. And I've heard of Psycho before that, like Police Academy jokes and stuff like that. But but I've never I've never heard of the sequel. They never parried the se parodied the sequel. Like Psycho Two, they didn't even exist. And I love 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 Psycho Two. I find it like the perfect double feature with one. I can't. They're different, so you can't really compare them. But these are fantastic movies. Um, quick summary if you're not familiar with Psycho. Um, Psycho is about... Without giving it away. Psycho is about Norman Bates. Am I giving it away? It's about him and the motel he runs and that's basically all I want to say if you haven't seen it and if you haven't seen it I'm gonna give you to the count of five now to turn it off and I will tell you before I do these are some of the greatest not horror it's horror movies I don't know if, depending on your age, it will scare you. Like, when I was a kid, it freaked me out. Not in kind of, um, if you ever watched uh, Twilight Zone or Tales from the Crypt, in that kind of way, where you got, like, the ending punchline, which would kind of freak you out, like, um, uh, the Tales from the Crypt, where the guy is playing dead, and then ends up being uh, being paralyzed while he's being autopsied. Stuff like that. That will freak you out. You know? That's how Psycho rolls. Uh, but what makes Psycho a better 
I don't know, a better franchise than the rest of them, because I like Norman Bates is, if it wasn't for per Anthony Perkins' performance, like, watch him, watch him in Psycho, then go and watch the Gus Van Sant remake of Psycho, and just skip directly to one of Norman Bates' uh, parts, because then you've already seen the original movie. Skip to when, the, when you meet Norman, and watch how Perkins do it, and how Vaughn tries to imitate how to do it. It's, it's a difference between being creepy and trying to be creepy, you know? Um, that movie really irks me. Like, I even, I can't believe I actually own it. And believe it or not, it was the first Psycho DVD I bought. It was the fucking remake. It was not the first I watched, but it was the first I bought. It's somewhere, up here somewhere. I don't even want to find it, piece of shit. Every time I try to watch it, I turn it off. Um, but yeah, this set is really cheap. It's a um, hundred kroners in Norway, so it's... Um, I don't know, less than eight, nine bucks. Uh... It's not a lot. Uh, you get all the Psycho movies. Like, like I said, I was surprised that it was uh, that there was two. There are four. Uh, Psycho one, which I said says is a masterpiece. It's great. It's uh, the music is great. The shadow is great. The direction is great. The the bad guy is great. The good guy is great. Everything is great. Psycho two picks up twenty two years later. As it was released 22 years later, it picks up the story 22 years later. What happens to Norman when he go when he eventually gets released? Fuck, I gave it away. Everybody who didn't want the spoiler, five, four, three, two, one, stop it. Um, I, either way, I was talking about the sequel. You should know. Yeah. Um, what happens to Norman after he's released and? How do people react to him being released? This is actually probably the smartest sequel to a scary movie that's ever been made. Uh, if you ever heard the pitch of uh, Peter Jackson's Nightmare on Elm Street movie, then yeah, it's on that level. Of, they didn't just like in the 80s, it was a lot of cash in like uh, Friday the 13th Part 2. Uh, first one worked, it made a lot ton of money. Let's just make another one. Bam. Uh, what is it? Uh, kids getting killed. Uh, we need a new killer. Uh, the son of the of the previous one. Uh, boom. And then we keep him going. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah. Um, Friday the 13th. My, um, um, sorry. Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh we had a formula that worked. We tried to replace the guy who plays Freddy in the second one. That didn't work, so we need the same guy. But still, we keep the formula. Bomb, 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 bomb. And I love these movies. This one doesn't follow the formula at all. Um, it's Bates back at the house, but the twist of this movie is so brilliant that I am not going to say it here. But if you know, then you know. And... You know, it's 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 fucking great. You expect one thing and it's not. Uh, Psycho 3, probably the lesser of the franchise, but still an enjoyable watch. This was directed by Anthony Perkins himself. So, Norman Bates doing a Psycho movie. Uh, Jeff Fahey has a good, good role in it. Uh, really not much to say. More of a traditional... This is what people probably would expect of the second one, kind of. Um, it's just a... It's a good good slasher movie and a weird slasher movie, but still it's kind of a traditional slasher movie. And then we came to Psycho 4, the last one, or, or the beginning as it was called, which was a TV movie, I think it was HBO or Showtime or something that did it and um this is basically uh, norman bates early years 
and he is played by oh my god I don't want to get this wrong uh, Henry Thomas, which you all probably know from uh, from E. T. as the kid from E. T. And the great part thing about this, you think four, this is where it starts to get stupid. No, this is where it ends well, actually. Um, you got this is the first time I saw anybody else do Norman Bates basically as well as Norman as Anthony Perkins did. Um, he does Henry does not try to imitate um, Anthony Perkins. He he just is Norman Bates in the same kind of way, just a younger version. He has that kind of build, that nervousness, that... Norman was never a mean guy. This is a mo four movies of basically him killing people and Norman is not a bad guy. You would you like Norman. He's a he's a nice person. He's just really effed in the head. Um, the gr a woman, um, Olivia Hussey, who plays his mother, is brilliant as mother. Um, really uncomfortable watching a few of these scenes. Um, and yeah. Guess that's sort of it. Um, there is a few short making of and stuff like that. Um, you have uh, the soundtrack, um, mono, mono, Dolby stereo, and you got English for the hearing impaired, um, Arabic, Czech, Greek, Hungarian, Turkish, um. Italian, Spanish, German, uh, Dan Danish, uh, Finnish, Hebrew, Norwegian, Portuguese, Russian, Swedish, and Turkish. If I said that twice, I'm sorry. Uh, subtitles, Region 2 and 4. Really good collection, really good franchise. And unlike the f uh, Friday and Nightmares and stuff like that, who keeps coming out in like these expensive boxes, which I really need to update them, so I, I have to go and buy them. But this this is a really cheap and a good franchise. This is the most consistently good horror franchise. You get more good movies for your buck in this than you get in any Nightmare or a Friday mm. box. And I think most people would agree with me. In those boxes, you get at least three, four bad sequels. In these, the worst one is decent. There's not a bad among, among them. Uh, of course, 18. Be 18. But no, don't be 18. If you want to be scared by this, buy them and show them to your kids. Or your nephews. Or your friends' kids. Or wh whoever. You need to be 8 and up and watching at least the first two of these movies. And the gore level is pretty decent for both of them. So they won't fuck them up for life. Psycho Collection, one through four, a good buy. And my last one for the day, for the day, which was one I was skeptic to, and I heard everybody praising it, and I still wouldn't believe it, and I, oh my god, why would I want this? Na 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 na. Django Unchained by Quentin Tarantino, a fantastic Blu-ray box with. Uh, these great pictures and it even includes the soundtrack which for a Quentin Tarantino movie we know is mandatory Christoph Waltz oh, Sam Jackson Leo DiCaprio and Django's wife I don't remember her name and of course the movie and the soundtrack, which is fucking amazing, both of them, because goddamn this movie is awesome. I'm gonna go Brad Jones on this, and I ain't gonna spoil much. Um, it also, the um, Vertigo is releasing the script as a comic, which is not a shot by shot from the movie. It's a shot by shot from the script, 
that Quentin Tarantino wrote. And there's actually still one issue to go in this, so this is not completely released yet. But um, a great kind of... I was having trouble. I was on my way home after buying this. And I think my phone was dead or something, and I really didn't have anything to do. And I had a, quite a while to to uh, to kill. So I was really tempted to read this. But then I like open it, and I find it's like a straight up from the script. I'm like, ah, I gotta watch the movie first. And the movie is as awesome as everybody is telling you it is. It's uh, the most fun Western I've ever seen probably because I'm not a big Western guy like I'll watch the Eastwood stuff and I'll sit down and watch a John Wayne some once in a while but it's not it's not my thing uh, I loved Red Dead Redemption I keep saying loved but when I love something I do um, I loved Red Dead, Red Dead Redemption and I feel like this is basically Red Dead Redemption the movie uh, it's got the same kind of Humor, it's got the same kind of um, feel to it, yeah. Um, this grim but humorous kind of look at it. Um, other on the DVD, um, a few uh, a few documentaries on costume design and. Uh, Reimagining the Spaghetti Western, Horses and Stunts of Django Unchained, uh, 20 Years of Making Tarantino, in the Making Tarantino Blu-ray Collection, uh, yeah, Soundtrack Spot. I always feel if Tarantino is lacking on one thing, it's the goddamn special features. Uh, I never feel he... Like, he's only done commentaries for movies he's written and not done himself. If you ever get the special edition of uh, True uh, True Romance, it has a fantastic commentary track. But yeah, quick recap of my latest buys, which was, uh, this has been a good year for me when it comes to that. Awesome, 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 and awesome. A uh, lot of goodness, great old actors. You'll have a great old Halloween time watching this. Uh, four film favorites. Warner Brothers, Dracula, something like that. Um, great, great buy. Doctor Who Series Six. Um, of course, if you if you're a fan, why wouldn't you own it already? Fine, uh, fine season. Doctor Who is like a pizza. Even a bad one is a good one. So, no problem buying that one. Psycho Collection. Go get it. It's mandatory for horror fans. Um, I'm going to watch Psycho after this, actually. I love Psycho. Yeah, a uh, few special features, but you don't really need them. Psycho is for the movies and the movies alone. So, uh, pick these up. And, of course, Django Unchained. Who doesn't love Quentin Tarantino? I love Quentin Tarantino. So, um, yeah, I've been rambling on long enough, I guess. Got a good size video. So, um, I'll try and get something new done, maybe even today. If not, I'll see you again sometime. Yeah, this is me, whatever I'm calling myself, signing off. Um, I remember it so you don't have to. Um, Angry Joe! Yeah. Gia Joe!